This is Grumpy SEO Guy, episode 50. Why your competition outranks you even though they have bad content and you have good content. You're listening to Grumpy SEO Guy, the SEO podcast that doesn't waste your time with nonsense that doesn't work. I'm the Grumpy SEO Guy, and I'm sharing with you the strategies that have helped me successfully run my SEO agency for the last 14 years. In this podcast, I'll be sharing my knowledge and experience, discussing tips and strategies, and trying to help you cut through the confusion that permeates this industry. If you listen to this podcast, you will know more about SEO than 99% of people on the planet. Ready? Let's get started. I'm the Grumpy SEO Guy. Let me tell you why I'm grumpy today. I'm grumpy today because the most common question I have seen in the last six months in email and on Reddit is this question. Hey guys, I've been building a website for like six months, maybe a year. You know, the point is they've been building the website for a long time and I'm not ranking and my competitors are outranking me. But here's the thing, my competitors have terrible content and I have really good content. I'm an expert in my field. I've spent a lot of time creating content that is very helpful and very good, but I'm not ranking, but my competition is ranking and their content is so bad. Why am I not outranking them? My content is better. That is a very common question and we're going to answer it. But before we do that, my lawyer tells me that I have to say this right now. A quick disclaimer before we get started, everything I say here is based on my experience and opinion from 14 years in the industry. I don't officially know how Google or any other search engines work. Everything I say here is hypothetical and based on my experience. This podcast does not constitute advice or services. What worked for me may or may not work for you. Okay, back to the show. Look, people who listen to Grumpy SEO Guy know the answer to that question. And if you don't listen to Grumpy SEO Guy, I'm going to explain the answer to that question. Don't worry you'll understand it. But the people that are asking that question, it's not their fault. It's not their fault that they were given terrible SEO advice. And part of the reason is because most SEO advice is terrible. Most SEO advice is how people wish SEO worked rather than how SEO works. And these people, they probably followed the advice that they received. Okay. They probably read somewhere or heard somewhere or saw on YouTube, or maybe they bought a course because there's a lot of SEO courses out there that you can buy. Some of which are very expensive that basically tell you that writing good content is the way to do SEO. That if you write really good content, you will somehow be at the top of the search engines. Like there is somehow a way that the search engines will say, hey guys, this content is really good. It's going to be the first result. Obviously it doesn't work that way. So now that you have your website that you've been working on for six months or 12 months, and you understand that you have really good content. And let me say this again, because I've mentioned this in previous episodes. I believe you when you say your content is really good. I really do. If somebody tells me that their content is good, I believe them. If somebody tells me that their content is better than their competition, I fully believe them because most people can write good content. If you are experienced in your niche, okay, if you have been doing it for a year or five years or 10 years, you probably understand it better than most people. It makes perfect sense that somebody who has a lot of experience in whatever their industry is could write good content about it. Now, look, not everybody is a good writer. I understand that. There's writers. You can hire writers, okay? But most people are able to write great content in something that they are an expert at. Again, not everybody, but most people. So if you've been, you know, um, uh, a developer or a plumber or whatever, and you've been doing it for like 10 years, okay? And you tell me that you have really good content on your website. You know what? You probably do. I believe you. Now, people who listen to Grumpy SEO Guy, they know that content is not really a ranking factor. So it doesn't really matter, but I I still believe you. I believe you that you have really good content on your site. Most websites have good, well, let me be careful how I say this. Most websites that people put time and effort into have good content, okay? There are a ton of good content websites that are nowhere in the search results. And the reason is because they don't have any authority, but you guys already knew that. So 
The answer to the question of why does my website with six months or 12 months worth of content, really good content, factual, correct, written by professionals who know the industry better than anyone else in the world, why is it not ranking? Why is my competition with their awful content that is bad and wrong? Why are they ranking? I have good content. They don't have good content. Why am I not ranking? Why are they ranking? I did everything I was supposed to do. I wrote really good content. I have my title tags and my H1 tags and my content is really good. Why am I not ranking? Why is my competition with their bad content outranking me? That is the question. The answer to that question is you do not have authority. Now, I have countless episodes at this point on this topic. <laughs> like, not, not countless. Like, this is episode 50. By the way, guys, thanks for listening to Grumpy SEO Guy for 50 episodes. Like, like, actually like like thank you like i'm i'm this is actually episode 50 i didn't know i was gonna do 50 episodes it's pretty awesome so thank you for being a fan of grumpy seo guy for 50 episodes but anyway i don't have countless episodes but i have many episodes that explain why authority is what matters when you're ranking not content if this is your first episode and you think that I'm crazy because what I just said contradicts all of those YouTube gurus and all of those courses you bought and every other self-proclaimed SEO expert anywhere and you're like, what are you talking about? I did everything right. If this is your first time listening to Grumpy SEO Guy and you're not familiar with the concept of authority, go listen to episode 21. Episode 21 is called Everything You Need to Know About SEO in 38 Minutes. So yeah, you got to spend like a little bit more than a half hour listening to it, but you will learn more from that episode than from any other piece of content anywhere on the internet about the fundamentals of how SEO works. Probably. I'm not saying there isn't one that exists that's better. I'm saying I've never seen anything better. I think that one episode will teach you more than any course that you might pay for, especially if the course is telling you that you need to write good content to rank because that's just not true at all. Go listen to that episode. You can wait until this one's over. I'll say it again. It's episode 21. It's called Everything You Need to Know About SEO in 38 Minutes. That is the best place to start if you are new to Grumpy SEO Guy, or if you are new to doing actual SEO, or if you are just aggravated by the fact that your website with really good content doesn't rank. The answer to your question of why you're not ranking and your competition is ranking is almost assuredly that they have more authority than you do. So I'm not going to go into a very complicated answer because I literally have other episodes where I talk about this at length. Okay. By the way, start with episode 21 if this is a new concept for you. But the short version is this. Content is not a ranking factor. There is no such thing as good content or bad content. Search engines cannot tell if content is good or if content is bad. They cannot tell. I don't care who told you that they can tell because they can't. All they can do is tell what the content is about, okay? That's called relevancy, remember that word. But they can't tell if it's good or bad. They can only tell what it's about. So in order to determine how useful the content is or how good the content is or how correct, by the way, search engines can't tell if content is correct or not, or how helpful the content is. They have to go by the responses of other sites. So what that means is, generally speaking, the theory is that good content will probably get better backlinks than bad content. Because why would you link to a bad website? You wouldn't. Therefore, websites that get better backlinks. Now, please be aware, I did not say more backlinks. I said better backlinks. Websites that get better backlinks. And when I say better, I mean good contextual backlinks. Contextual means in the blog post or in the article, like blah, 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 check out this site, blah, 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 as opposed to 
a link at the bottom of the website, like a footer link or a link on the side, like a blog roll or forum profile links or blog comment links, because those are considered bad quality links. It means good links, like a contextual backlink from a good quality website. Websites can be good quality or they can be low quality. They can be authoritative or they can be spammy, okay? Links from bad websites will hurt you. Links from good websites will help you. So the way to get authority is to get good backlinks from good quality websites. Now, if you're new to this, you're probably like, okay, that's reasonable. What can I do to tell if a website is good quality or not? Excellent question. I'm not going to bore you in this episode, but I'm going to tell you, go listen to episodes 37, which is called The Difference Between Good Backlinks and Bad Backlinks, and then listen to episode 39, which is called The Difference Between Good Backlinks and Bad Backlinks, part two. The truth is you have to do some research. It's not a short answer. It's very easy to understand, but it's not a short answer. You need to actually learn the stuff yourself so that you can look into it, so that you can dig into the different websites and find out if they are worth getting a backlink from. Anyway, content does not create authority. You need authority to rank, but content does not create authority. You can have a new website and you can put the best content in the world on that website and you won't gain any authority because authority does not come from content. So you could do everything right. Your content could be phenomenal, correct, written by the smartest people in the world with five PhDs. I think I gave that example in another episode. I said, you could get a writer with five PhDs to write content. It's like just saying this is like the smartest person ever, right? Five PhDs to write your content for you. And that wouldn't make it rank because content, no matter how good it is, is not a ranking factor. What does content do? I'm going to tell you what content does because it does not build authority, but it does two things. You could arguably make the case that it does more than two things, but two is really all that you have to think about. Okay. The first thing content does is it determines relevancy. Remember that word relevancy. What is relevancy? All relevancy means is what is my website about? What is the topic of my website? A website that has articles about blue widgets is relevant for blue widgets. That website is about blue widgets. Okay. That's all relevancy means. By the way, don't get confused. Some people are using a new term. They're calling this topical authority. Topical authority is just a new word for relevancy. It's not a new concept. It's been around forever. Relevancy has been around for at least the 14 years I've been doing SEO. So it's not like anytime you hear topical authority, just say to yourself in your head, relevancy. It's the same thing. It's literally what I just described. Relevancy just means what is the subject of a website? What does it talk about? We'll come back to why that's important, maybe. And if we don't in this episode, we'll do it in the next episode. Okay, that's one of the things content does. Content establishes relevancy. What is the subject of the website? The second thing content does is it can get you a penalty. So that would be a bad thing. Relevancy is a good thing. Penalties are bad. What is a penalty? A penalty is when the search engines say, you are not following the rules Therefore, you are not going to show up in the search engines. It's basically what a penalty means. Okay, so there's a kind of penalty that you can get from content. It is called a keyword stuffing penalty. Keyword stuffing, if you have not heard that term, is when you put your keywords in the content way more often than it would ever normally happen. Now, the reason that people do this is because a long time ago, it was a way to spoof relevancy. The trick was... The way the algorithms worked a long time ago was the more often a word appeared on a site, the more relevant that site was. So if you wanted to rank using the term blue widgets, okay, you wanted to show up in the search results for blue widgets, you could just put the word blue widgets on your website a lot and you would probably rank. So what would that sound like? That would sound like this. Whenever I'm in the market for blue widgets, I like to look online at blue widgets And then after I look online at blue widgets, I like to call my friend and ask my friend about his blue widgets. 
And then after I ask my friend about Blue Widgets, sometimes I might read an advertisement for Blue Widgets, but other times I will write a letter to my other friend because he doesn't like to use his phone and I'll ask him about his Blue Widgets and then sometimes I'll go to the store. There's two Blue Widget stores by me. The first Blue Widget store has a lot of Blue Widgets and the second Blue Widget store only has a couple Blue Widgets. Like, see how I'm using the word Blue Widgets all the time? Never ever put content on your site like that. It will get you a penalty. Do not do it. You don't need to keyword stuff your content unless you want to get a penalty, which you don't. So. That's all content does from an SEO perspective. Content does other stuff, okay? So we said content provides relevancy and it can also cause a penalty, okay? Those are both true. Those are both SEO topics. Content does other stuff that involves how visitors might interact with your website, but those are not SEO traits. People are gonna say they are, but those are the same people that tell you content will make you rank and those people are wrong. And you know that because you have really good content and you're not ranking. Like content does other things, but those are the only things that you have to be concerned about. So all your good content, all your bad content, doesn't matter. Have you ever seen a website rank with bad content? I have. I've given this example before. I'll give this example again. One day I wanted to know how to take the audio from a movie file. I think, I can't remember what file type it was. It was some movie file. It doesn't matter. And save it as an MP3. So I searched online for how to do it. And one of the results at the top of the search engine results gave instructions. And it basically said, take the file change the extension to mp3 and then save the file and now you have an mp3 file okay that's not right that is that that is a bad answer that does not all you have then is a movie that is incorrectly named as an mp3 you didn't pull the audio from it you didn't save it as a different file the file is still the same size so instead of being a short little mp3 file it's a huge movie file okay like absolutely a horrible answer but do you want to know why that website was ranking? It was ranking because the domain had authority. Bad content ranks all the time if a domain has authority. That's how SEO works. Anyway, I'm not gonna reveal the name of that domain. It's a very well-known, very authoritative domain that tends to turn up in a lot of searches when you're asking, how do I do a thing, okay? But the point is, I was like, come on, this is nonsense. Like, what, like rename it, like change the extension from dot whatever it was to dot mp3. No, that is the wrong answer. That is not how you do it. Search engines didn't care. It was at the top of the results. Why? Because authority. So the answer to your question, again, of why you're not ranking and your competition is ranking in the event that you don't have a penalty, the answer to your question is your competition has more authority than you. So how do you get authority? Well, we already kind of talked about that. You get authority by getting backlinks from authoritative websites. Listen to episodes 37 and 39. It explains the difference between good backlinks and bad backlinks and good websites and bad websites, okay? Because you can't just get any website to backlink to you, okay? Because some of them aren't going to and some of them are terrible. And there are literally people that sell low quality backlinks to scam you because that's how the SEO industry with its zero barriers to entry and its no certifications nor governing body works. So by the way, I, I don't think that that would be good. Like I don't think there should be SEO certifications. By the way, I have another episode on SEO certifications because basically the only organization that could give out an SEO certification would be a search engine itself. And all that certification would do is basically prove that you know how to manipulate the results of that search engine. And search engines don't want people to think that the results can be manipulated. Anyway, let's do this one more time. The reason your competition is outranking you with their terrible content has literally nothing to do with their content and has generally everything to do with their authority. They have more authority than you because they have better backlinks than you. The way to solve your problem and start ranking is not to write more content. It's not to change your content. It is to build authority by getting backlinks from authoritative websites. I have a lot of other episodes on how to do that, including episode 49, which comes right before this one, which is titled The Four Ways to Get Backlinks. So that will give you a taste of the four different ways to get backlinks.
You don't have to do all of them, but you need to be aware of how they work. Because listen, if you're not ranking, this is, and I need to, I need to say this because this is like, for some reason, this is always how people feel like they should handle it. Like, so they ask the question, why am I not ranking? We have really good content. Our competition has bad content and our competition is outranking us. Why are we not ranking? And then I will explain to them how authority works and the reason they're not ranking. And then they will somehow walk away from that conversation saying, so I think I'm just going to write some more content. Like, no, that that's, that's the wrong answer. The solution to your problem of not ranking is not writing more content. If you have six months to a year's worth of content, which is what they usually say when they ask this question, I've been writing my website for six months or 12 months and I have tons of really good content. You have tons of really good content. You just said it. You have tons of really good content. And I believe you that you actually have tons of really good content, okay? The solution is something other than more content. Content is not working. You've already written six to 12 months of really good content, okay? Your competitor has who knows how many months or whatever of really bad content, but they're outranking you. So obviously it's not about good content. It's about something else. Well, I gave you the answer. It's about authority. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's the answer. Your competition may not have more backlinks than you, but they have better backlinks than you. So that's the answer. Now, looking into backlinks is a whole other topic because somebody like the people listening to this who aren't going to walk away thinking, oh, I just need to write more content. Which again, that no, don't do it that way. That's I mean, unless you want to keep not ranking, then go ahead and do it. But if you actually want to rank, which is the purpose of SEO in the first place and why you asked that question, you need to get authority. You need to get backlinks. You might be saying to yourself, I would love to see what these backlinks look like. What kind of backlinks does my competition have? There are various tools that will let you do that. I talk about some of them in episode three. They're usually not free. Just FYI, SEO is usually not free. There are some things that are free, some tools that are free, some tools that have free trials, okay? But for the most part, you gotta pay for it. It's terrible, but those people are spending lots of money collecting data to make the tools and you got to pay for them. So anyway, there's a couple tools that will let you check backlinks. One of these tools is called Ahrefs. That's A, the letter A, A-H-R-E-F-S.com, Ahrefs.com. Another tool is called SEMrush, S-E-M-R-U-S-H, SEMrush.com. Another tool is called KeySearch.co, not .com, .co, K-E-Y-S-E-A-R-C-H dot co dot C-O, okay? Those are some to get you started. There's another tool called Majestic, M-A-J-E-S-T-I-C dot com, Majestic dot com. Now, each of these tools is different. There is no one tool that shows you each backlink that every competitor has, okay? But each tool crawls the internet in its own way. Each tool collects data in its own way. I'm not saying that you have to use all of them. Might not want to spend that much money, honestly. But you can't assume that what one tool shows you is correct and complete. Now, with that said, the only place that could actually show you that data would be a search engine and search engines aren't going to show you that data because they know that you're using that data to manipulate the rankings and they don't want you to do that. And there's a whole other episode on that too. But this will get you started. The solution to your concern of why your competition is outranking you, even though they have horrible content and you have really good content, is because they have more authority than you. That's the answer. There is no other answer. That's the answer. The answer to your question is they have authority and you don't, or they have more authority than you. That's the answer. Don't let someone try to tell you that you just need to write more content. Maybe if you spend another year writing content, you might start ranking. No, that is wrong. You will not start ranking until you get authority. So, I mean, it's up to you. You can believe me if you want. I, I, like, I'm, not, I'm not selling anything. It doesn't concern me at all. I, I, I don't care either way, but that's the correct answer. So I don't, I don't know what else to say. Let me just say this. Let's just, let's just clarify this. One more, one more clarification. Okay, ready? Your competitor 
even if they had good content, they would still be outranking you. And it has nothing to do with because their content is good. Look, if you're getting outranked by good content, the reason they're outranking you is they have more authority than you. If you're getting outranked by a website with bad content, the reason you're being outranked is because they have more authority than you. They are ranking in spite of their content, not because of it. Your website with good content does not rank. Therefore, content is not why you rank. I don't know how else to say it. I hope this answers your question. And I hope you listen to the next episode because we're going to talk about the stuff you need to do to rank. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy this podcast, please leave a review. It would really help the show out. I hope this episode was helpful. If you have any questions or want to suggest a subject for a future episode, you can contact me on Reddit. My username is Grumpy SEO Guy. You can visit the Grumpy SEO Guy subreddit or you can email me at hello at grumpyseoguy.com. If you email me, please either whitelist my email address or check your junk folders because I've been told that my replies are going into the junk folder and it's probably because we're talking about things like SEO and backlinks and I think those words will classify an email as spam. And if you wanna support the podcast because it's the best source of SEO information on the planet and it's free, you can do so at patreon.com slash grumpy SEO guy. And I will talk to you later. You're listening to Grumpy SEO Guy, the SEO podcast that doesn't waste your time with nonsense that doesn't work. Join us next Wednesday when we talk about the four things you need to do to rank.